Hello AP World History students. Today we're going to be tackling the issue of Palestine, also taking a little bit of a look at Egypt. Just some historical background to um, be rem reminded of is um, that Palestine, the region of Palestine, is considered to be very significant to the world's three monotheistic religions. We have the Jewish people who believe that this was their promised land. We have for Christians, the birth of Jesus in Nazareth, Nazareth and his resurrection, or crucif crucifixion and resurrection in Jerusalem, as well as uh, importance for the Muslim faith, especially in Jerusalem. So this is an area that is just central to these three world religions. Um, however, for many, many years, it was not an area of conflict. In the 10 hundreds, you might recall that the Christian Crusades went into what is known as Palestine and took back Jerusalem for the Christians, or so they called it. Uh, about 100 years later, the Muslims were able to regain possession of Palestine, and they were the dominant faith within Palestine. However, Muslims, Christians, and Jews were living there together peacefully. In the 1500s, Palestine was absorbed by the Ottoman Empire. And then the Ottoman Empire, as you might recall, joined the Central Powers for World War I. That included Germany and Austria. Of course, the Central Powers lost the war, and in various treaties and agreements after the war, uh, the lands of the Middle East that had been former German colonies or central power colonies went into what was called the mandate system or basically a protectorate system. So the British in particular were given Palestine as a mandate. In 1917, the Balfour Declaration was made, which promised the Jews a homeland in Palestine. As we all know, the Jewish people have been uh, subject to anti-Semitism for centuries at this point. It didn't just start with World War II and the Holocaust. And so this seemed like a great option for Jewish people. The Zionist movement was growing. People in Eastern Europe, in Poland, other parts of Europe where Jews were being persecuted, start moving to Palestine. Now, uh, this would lead to Palestine actually having rule as a mandate ruler between the wars from 1920 to 1948. However, Great Britain had its hands full. Um, a lot of migration, like I already said, was coming into Palestine uh, because of that growing Zionist movement and the ideal of a Jewish homeland being reinstated for the, the Jewish people. So what happens? Jewish and Arab pressures drive Brit the British to, to hand Palestine over to the United Nations for a resolution. They're like, you know what, we can't figure this out. So UN make a resolution. So the UN did. They made a resolution for a partition plan. Now we've talked to the British about the partition of India and Pakistan, and we know how well that worked out. Well, this plan would, this is a map of the plan, and the orange areas would be a Jewish state and the yellow areas would be a Palestinian state. Now here's the Dead Sea. This is the Jordan River. This is the Sea of Galilee. These are all important uh, places for people as uh, geopolitical and religious reasons. Well, Palestinians say, no, no, thank you. We don't like this. Um, you know what? We want to determine our own future. So, Palestine was kind of in limbo for a while. And then on May 14th, 1948, the Jews declare an independent state of Israel. Basically just say, we are a state and we want to be recognized as such. Ben-Gurion was the name of the person who had become the first uh, leader of this new independent state of Israel. Uh, the British leave the next day, all right? So fighting, in this region begins immediately uh, between the Palestinians and this new state of Israel, uh, leading to a series of conflicts that spans decades. So if you look at this map, you can see the Israel after the UN 
partition of Palestine in 1947. And then 1948-49, new Israeli territory is, um, is acquired through war and more territory, the green, is occupied by the Six-Day War in 1967. Um, and then orange is occupied area by War of 1973. The Sinai Peninsula here was important for the Jewish people. It is, in fact, where they wandered after they left Egypt for 40 years, um, but it was actually returned to Egypt between 1978 and 1982. So another way, not only through war, but another way that Israel expands its territory is through uh, what are called settlements. So people would basically move into areas that were supposed to be Palestinian and they would create these settlements and they would occupy Palestinian land. In essence, taking over Palestinian land just by the mere fact of being present on what was Palestinian land. The Palestinians ended up being restricted to a very limited area. Uh, that would be the Golan Heights and the Gaza Strip. And you're going to see more about this in the video that you're going to watch. Uh, Palestine is now recognized as a non-member observer state by the United Nations. That means that it is not recognized as a full state, although some countries do recognize it as a state, but it has the ability to observe and participate in meetings at the UN, but it doesn't have voting power. I believe that this issue of Palestine and Israel will be difficult for years to come. Throughout my lifetime, there have been multiple, multiple meetings between Palestinian and Israeli leaders, and there are just some things that they cannot come to agreement on. Now, I will say that Jerusalem is divided into quarters, um, and part of it is Islam, part of it is Jewish, part of it is Christian. Um, and so if one is to go into Jerusalem right now, they would be able to go into all states. All right, let's talk Egypt. Um, so Egypt, um, we're going to uh, first talk about uh, Abdel Nasser. He takes a leadership position in the Arab world. And one of the reasons why he does this is that he nationalizes the Suez Canal in 1956. So basically, the canal had been controlled by British and French interests and the canal is super important strategically and geopolitically because it connects the mediterranean sea with the red sea from the red sea we get to the arabian sea from the arabian sea we can go around india into the indian ocean and we can get to china so um, this is a huge huge savings of time instead of having to go all the way around africa in order to get to asia so um so a couple of things uh, were important here. Uh, first of all, they feared losing access to the oil-rich Mideast. Now, oil, as we have talked about before, both palm oil and now fossil fuels become really, really important for growing industry, automobile use, etc. And there is a lot of oil in the Middle East, Iraq and Iran. And this was discovered in the early 20th century. And so we're getting a lot of, and Saudi and the Arabian Peninsula. So we're getting a lot of oil from these countries. And if our oil tankers have to go all the way around Egypt, this is a much longer and more difficult trip to make than going through the Suez Canal. Uh, at the time, they also feared um, Egypt's growing ties with the USSR. Nasser and the USSR had become friendly with one another. And so this is uh, another Cold War sort of conflict. Um, so the French and the British, along with the Israelis, fought a battle. They they brought in military to try to uh, get the control of the Suez Canal back. They were not victorious, and they were ejected from Egypt. So uh, Egypt has actually thrived as a nation, um, a non-theocracy nation, um, and uh, it has been really quite successful. So. 
watch the video on Palestine. I think you'll find that interesting and uh, we'll catch you the next time. And a PS to this recording, I misidentified the location of the Sea of Galilee earlier in the recording. The Sea of Galilee, actually, if you follow um, the map of uh, Israel, you'll see that the Sea of Galilee is here. Dead Sea, Jordan River, Sea of Galilee. Thank you.